In this lesson, I'm going to write a JSP page and deploy it to the server. This is kind of a bare bones approach, so I won't be covering every detail. I'll come back and fill in the other stuff later. This is just a quick run through the mechanics. Now, the server is already running. I've created a working directory named JWork. And I have created a directory for just this demonstration. So you won't have to sit there and watch me type. I've already created the source file of the JSP page. Uh, here it is. This is a very bare bones example. You can see that the general layout is that of an HTML page. But it does have some Java code stuck in it. Notice that there is the complete code of a loop, a Java loop with HTML code inside the loop. The tags with the percent signs mark the beginning and ending of the Java code, and everything else is good old HTML. This is the whole idea behind JSP. I'll be showing you more of the mechanics later. Right now, let's deploy this one. After a bit of initialization, you get a window that looks like this. As you can see, it has found the server and displays the port number of the administration port. Now, what we want to do here is create a web archive file, a WAR file, holding the JSP page. A WAR file can hold lots of different things that can make up what is known as an application. Now, this is not an application in the old sense of the word. It's a collection of files that go together to make up the web page. So the word application has a different meaning in this context. But in this example, we're just going to use it as a container for the one page. We get a window here that labels itself as a wizard. It tells you that it will create the file, but it needs something to put in it. In this example, we have the JSP file that was written earlier. Make sure that you have the button selected that creates a new WAR module. Over here, where it asks for the location of the WAR file, you put the full path name of the file, including the WAR suffix. Here you enter the file name again, but without the suffix. And here in the context root, you enter the file name again. This is a name that will become part of the URL. It will look like a directory name in the URL text, but it's not really a directory. It's a name that the server recognizes to address the current JSP application. You can see that one item has already been added to the contents. This is a directory entry that lists everything in the file, but the WAR file is otherwise empty. We want to add something new, so we select the button to edit the contents. At the top, you see the directory that holds the file, and at the bottom, the contents of the file itself. You select what you want and click the Add button. Now you see that it's been added to the contents in this window also. Then you go to the next window. We are creating a JSP page, so we click the button that indicates that. We only have one here, so the selection is easy. You can specify when the page is loaded. You can also add a description, and you can add an icon. But we're keeping things simple, so we're just going to move on with the next button and the Finish button closes this window. This brings us back to the original window. Nothing's been actually done yet, so you have to save your work. In the next lesson, we're going to verify that this has actually worked.